Thanks, Don. Welcome to Radio Tony and the Passion Project. Join us live each week as we journey into the world of passion. Want to live life passionately? Finding your passion could be the difference between living life in the everyday and living life with meaning and purpose. Take these weekly lessons into life and business. Interact with your host, Tony Lontis, and her Passion Project facilitator, Peter Wallman, as we conduct a passion mapping exercise with Tony live on air. Passion is everything. Good evening, everyone, and good morning to those listeners in Australia. You're live with Tony Lontis on The Passion Project, and today we will be talking to the amazing Janet Christensen all the way from London in Canada. So prior to starting her own business, Janet had 25 years of success in the corporate world in senior management, sales and personnel. She received official recognition for her performance and contribution from the Canadian Diabetes Association, Realty World, Canada and Kelly Services. Janet is a graduate of Western University and has a unique blend of experience with accreditations in power coaching, performance management coaching, coaching for success, retirement options, pre-retirement coaching, and she is also a master passion map coach. She's worked with a diverse range of clients, including corporate, entrepreneurial, and private individuals. And she has authored several published articles and co-authored over 20 books, among them, including The Coaching Gurus, The Power of Transformation, Creating a Blueprint for Inner Change, Breaking Free, Overcoming Self-Sabotage. She is a recipient of the 2013 Professional Women Network Literary Award. And currently, Janet works all around the world with clients sharing her experience through leadership training, customized programs, keynote presentations, and coachings. She's passionate about helping individuals and creating organizations that uh, want permanent positive change and achieve the result that they desire. Hello, Janet. Hello, Tony and audience. <laughs> <laughs> it's so lovely to have you with me. Um, as we were waiting to go live on air, we started a conversation about Canada and my comment was that normally I'm flying directly into Canada and my answer to Janet's question is usually Vancouver or Edmonton. Uh, my brother lives in Cranbrook near Kimberley. Uh, he's an ex-Australian who's been in Canada for 28 years, married a lovely Canadian girl. So I have a great love of Canadians and Canada in general. I've been a number of times and just adore it. So today we want to talk a little bit about you and your passion mapping journey. So you've got a lot of experience in the realm of coaching. Were you always drawn to that sort of work, Janet? Uh, I think it it drew me versus yes. uh, the other way around. I took some personal development work back in the uh, early 90s. Yes. And I came out of that going, this is the work that I want to do. Uh -huh. And so in uh, 2001, I left the corporate world to start my own business. Yes. And I uh, started, I got started getting my coaching accreditations. Yeah. And one night, another uh, coach acquaintance of mine and I went to Toronto yes. to see uh, a, a coaching. It was for a coaching group. And they had this guest speaker named Peter Wallman from Australia uh -huh. who was doing a presentation. And he took us through uh, sampling of passion mapping. Yes. And I was just so drawn to this. And I went up to him afterwards and I said, I want to do my passion map. And he said, well, I, yes. this was in October, October 14th, I remember. Yes. And, and in 2003, yes. and he said, I, I might be back next year. And I said, no, no, you don't understand. I want to do my passion map now. And he said, well, I'm on my way to Montreal. 
anyway, things manifested in a way that yes. in November, his colleague uh, who was working with him at the time ended up coming back to from Australia to the US. Yes. We convinced her to come up to Toronto because there were several of us who wanted to get do our passion maps. Yes. Did my passion map, was totally enthralled. Yes. Knew the, the value of this because as a coach yes. and with working with people, it's very difficult to challenge and change things from the space that you're in. And yes. this was such a wonderful tool to get people into a different space in order yes. to be able to look at things progressively and look at options. Yeah. Anyway, then what we did was this group of um, in, people who were had done their passion maps convinced Peter we wanted to be trained. So <laughs> I, I met him in October of 2003. Yes. And in February of 2004, there were three of us from Canada that flew to Australia oh. to get be trained. In yes. like less than four months, this happened. Yeah. yeah, It was amazing. And the true value is, as a coach, you could spend like six months with a client and that's costing yes. them their time and money. Yes. And it's, it could be frustrating to find where they are and where they want to go. Uh -huh. And pasture mapping is such an excellent way to connect people yes. to themselves so in a much deeper, more meaningful way. Yes. And then yes. they can get on the path and then you coach and you might only need to coach for two or three months after that. So it's yeah. it has made the uh, incredible difference in my life, but also in lives of clients. I, it's just amazing when I see people blossom into the people that they, the person they're meant to be. Yeah. And, and so, uh, you've had lots of success with your clients using the passion mapping process, haven't you? Oh, sorry. You're, I lost you there with what you asked me. <laughs> that's okay. That's no problem. That's what happens sometimes with live technology. It just up yes. and disappears. Mm -hmm. So you've had lots of success with clients and corporate in using passion mapping to draw out what they're most passionate about, yeah? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And it's, it's, it's interesting. When I was doing my training in Australia yes. one of the things that we did was we worked with six each of us on the training worked with six people to do a practicum passion map yes. and so this was back in 2004 and uh, I worked with one of the gentlemen that I worked with doing the practicum about um, five years later yes. I got a uh, an email from him saying thank you so much uh, doing my passion map changed my life dramatically. He yes. said, I've, I've left Australia, I've moved to England and I've started a global investment company that is ecologically responsible. And he's, he's thriving in this. Yes. And I, I had not had contact with him because he wasn't my client. He, I just yes. worked with him, but he said, this changed my life. Yeah. And that is, I've seen that happen. And I actually, I just submitted a chapter for a book yesterday. Yeah. And it's on, um, it's on self care. Yes. And I used a case of a client I worked with, um, again, a corporate client on a retreat that we did with passion mapping, there were, I think, five or six facilitators, and, and we did yes. this retreat. And this woman was doing, <clears throat> she highly successful, but on many levels, but yes. she was pushing herself so hard. She used to fly from San Francisco to New York. She took her children into bed, <gasps> get on a plane, sleep on the plane, fly to New York, deal with her client all day, fly back and uh, to San Francisco, hoping to get there in time to tuck her children into bed the next night. She used to do that twice a week. Oh. And she thought, you know, everyone's going, oh, you're so successful and everything. And she yeah. was so fit, but she realized she was fit in order to push herself to the limit she was a self-abusive yeah. she was pushing herself so hard it ended yeah. up um I after working with her she really stepped back and went I need to honor and myself my family she ended yes. up leaving that position and going working with their um in 
Washington at the White House. Yes. Yes. But she wasn't doing all the crazy traveling. She still had a yeah. meaningful job. But yeah. it, it's just, um, she found, it, it wakes people up to yes. their potential and um, what is working in their lives and what they would love to change. Yeah. Because yeah. sometimes you think you know what you're passionate about and, and driving you, but until you do a defined process like passion mapping, it, it makes it so much more powerful and it also makes it clearer because that's that, that connection to your conscious mind and the body connection of your unconscious mind makes it so much more powerful, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. And, you know, from, a, from the time we're born, yes. we're measured on what we do, what we achieve yes. and all the way through even in infancy oh you're walking now or you you know yeah. you're you're learning to talk and doing all this yeah. and then we go to school and we're constantly measured and evaluated and if you're playing sports you're measured and evaluated and all the way through and people ask young you know young people as they're growing up what yeah. do you want to do when you grow up and they never ask them how do you want to be we're never yeah. asked who and how do you want to be and what difference do you want to make in the world and it's, it's about stepping back to that space. And when we're connected with that, that's how we show up differently. And that's how we are fulfilled and have meaning in our lives. And that's so what passion mapping helps us find. Yeah. Have you had the opportunity to work with many young people in this process? Mm -hmm. Because the thought always occurs to me when we have these lovely conversations about passion, it's sometimes the older of us that, that do these sort of things. And wouldn't it be wonderful if we were able to give all of those uh, young adults just about to leave school a passion map and so that they knew very clearly oh, I love that or, or I don't love that or and direct them rather than doing what people tell them they should do or what they think they should do. They're solely focus, focused on their passions, whatever that might be. I have had that opportunity yes. and it has been so rewarding. Yeah. Uh, I've worked with um, several young people in their early 20s yes. who have been at that point where they're in school they're mm -hmm. trying to figure out what to do and they're uh -huh. they're realizing what they're doing isn't making them happy and so what do I do now yeah. and stepping back and it's like giving them permission to think yes. outside of the box yeah. and what they've done is I know these uh at least two of them I know still um yes. we're still in touch and I did their passion maps years ago and yeah. they're now um highly successful in yes. doing what they love yes. and uh in great relationships and you know are becoming parents and yeah. and it has just uh given them so much meaning in their life and a really great sense of direction and the courage to follow what yes turns their crank yes, <laughs> you know, what's absolutely. Get them out of bed in the morning yes yeah yeah Janet do you always find that once people are keyed into their passions the success follows or success in their terms follows yes I yeah. would say for sure and sometimes in surprising ways and yes. in ways that they never thought possible and yes. sometimes people start and just wanting to make a, a small change you know yeah. just a small change or something a little different and then it blossoms because yes. what happens is they find their self they find that beauty within yes they find their passion and yeah. it's like they get on a roll and yeah. it's amazing it's really yeah. amazing to see them get up and go and yeah. uh really thrive and 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 be courageous they have it gives yes. them courage to step yes. out step up and step out yes there's there's something about that um clarity 
behind what drives you and knowing that without any doubt, it, it tends to give you that courage to follow that thing that you love the most, doesn't yeah. it? Yes. And the amazing thing is that the energy that they bring to where yes. they dedicate themselves, there are surprising things that show up for them. Yes. That they manifest yes. uh, because they are so, and they, it's not even it, part of their plan. It's just their intention is I'm yes. going to go out and I'm going to do this somehow. And the yes. resources and the people and the opportunities show, show up, up. and do it. Yeah. It's something about that energy, isn't it, Janet? It's something about yeah. that energy that you release into the world that attracts what you want what you need, the people that you need to be connected to, the people that you need to be talking mm -hmm. to. And it fascinates me, absolutely fascinates me. And this is from a person who used to always be concerned and worry about where the next thing was coming from and how am I going to get into that or how am I going to re meet that person? Now it just happens. I don't know how it does, but it just does. And it fascinates me each and every week now that I'm very clear on my my passions and anything that is within that realm of my passions and I stick to that and I use it as a barometer I guess in mm -hmm. in in business and in life and if it fits into that passion map of mine then uh it's a yes if it doesn't then it's a no and I'm actually quite okay with that mm -hmm. um which has been a a big discovery for me that you don't have to say yes to everything you don't have to say uh, yes to every opportunity that's offered to you you don't have to say yes to every collaboration but the ones that mean the most to you they will be they will just come to you and it, mm -hmm. it's a fascinating process so Janet you've written or co-authored these amazing books and I was looking at your body of work um, last night and so uh, are you still going to continue writing do you think because you've got these <laughs> these wonderful books you know the coaching gurus the power of transformation creating the blueprint for inner change uh, breaking free overcoming self-sabotage that would be that that one I've got on my list to <laughs> go back on Amazon <laughs> and see if I can still get it <laughs> I think you probably could through yeah professional woman yep. publishing yes. yeah yep. actually it was, it was there i'm on the hook <laughs> for <laughs> um two books two books of two my more? own um <gasps> and i'm actually right now about halfway three quarters of the way through writing my own book which yes. is called mia and yes. it's uh, about missing in action, what I was talking about before, about how we get so programmed yes. doing what we're, we think we're supposed to do. Uh -huh. And um, so I'm planning to have that finished into the publisher before the beginning of August. Yes. So, uh -huh. that, so you're that, on a yeah. deadline. Yeah. And uh, I'll, gi I'll, I'll give you a spoiler alert. It starts out yes. as MIA for missing in action. Yes, yes. But it turns into, instead of missing an action, it, it turns into MIA became, becomes I am. And it's inspired, oh, authentic, oh, and oh. mindful. Yeah. So it's about how just making these switches yes. that with our focus, how it transforms our lives. Yeah. So that's one. And then the other one that um, I, is called Leading from Behind. Yes. And that's about, I've worked with a lot of leaders and um, it's not about being up front, the person in the front going, follow me, I have all the answers. Yes. It's about yes. le true leadership is really about helping people find their own gifts, talents, Correct. purpose, and helping them develop that. Yeah. It's not about being yeah. the go-to person. It's about yeah. being the support person. Yeah. So I've actually, um, the publisher has uh, got a, uh, her accounting firm to fund at least good part of the book um, with that oh, one. Oh, that's so I'm phenomenal. That one too. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I, so I'm still writing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. That's fantastic. So, mm -hmm. um, which leads us to, uh, we've just touched on that subject of leadership and I'm pretty passionate about um, a good leadership. And I just am tempted to ask you about 
a commentary on some of the leadership we're seeing across the world at the moment. Am I allowed to gag? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Um, oh, some of the leadership that we are seeing from the so-called leaders is abysmal, yes. in my opinion. Thank um, you. Thank you, Janet, because yes. yes. I was going to say I'm truly horrified at mm -hmm. the leadership we're seeing across the world. Yeah. And I, I'm not sure uh, how much we're going to have to do to see some of that inspirational leadership come to the fore. So just in our little Asia Pacific area, we have an amazing New Zealand Prime oh, Minister. Oh, yes. She is yes. awesome. <laughs> yes. That's great leadership. And mm -hmm. if we could clone her across the world, just imagine what an amazing uh, world we would have. Yes. Yes. It, it would be truly amazing and actually this um the chapter that i just just submitted was yes. for a book that's called the new female leader so yes. it's on leadership but i wrote about self-care and yes. self-care is not selfish it's actually vital but as Absolutely. a leader that they need to model self-care as well not push people to the limit but to model yes. that self-care yeah and i think that's you know with the the new zealand uh, Prime Minister, she is she is truly amazing, and we need she, more people like that. It's not about yeah. power and control. No we need collaborative leadership. Yes. Not this. Oh, here I'm the big. You know, big I'm the big there. boss, and you'll just yeah. do as I say. Yeah, it's it's very sad when you see yeah. what's going on, and I Particularly, think you yeah, would see ahead. it watching the U.S. I, and in particular reference mm -hmm. to the US because I do yeah. so much of my work in the US and I just I feel a great uh, sense of 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 uh, hurt for what the American people are going through at the moment. Mm -hmm. I feel very sad for their country, um, and that's from the outside looking in. Um, and in talking to lots of Americans, there's a great many of them that don't realise just how the world is seeing the once great United States mm -hmm. of America. And that's so sad. It is. It's really sad. And I'm hoping that actually, I think the combination of the pandemic and yes. um, other th the economy and other things yes. that are happening right now that, you know, the situation in the States with police and yes. um, that this is actually a great, turning point and I hope so a time of opportunity yes for things to shift and change yes and because the all the protests and everything have gone global yes and so I I think there is that sense of energy it's a disruptive time and yes. I am hoping that yes. this helps us you know shift and move in a different direction yeah really yeah uh, it, I, I feel like we've had enough of, and, and I don't mean this in a horrible way, but white male privileged leadership has to end. And I don't say that as an attack on men. I'm, it's just a comment mm -hmm. on white male leadership in so many countries across the world. And yes. for the world to change and for humanity to grow, we need a change in that sort of leadership. Mm -hmm. And again, Jacinta is at the forefront of showing how real leadership is done. And she also uh, seems to epitomize female leadership in a feminine essence. So she's not trying to be a male. She's very much a woman, but she does it in a beautiful, gentle, wonderful way mm -hmm. that is inspiring to watch, actually. Yes. Yes, it is. And I've heard her speak and I've yeah. you know, been, you know, following it. Yes. And um, we get way too much Trump news up here. <laughs> I was just going to, are you, are you over, over uh, Trump <laughs> conspiracy yeah. and tweeting and. <laughs> yes. And so it's, it's refreshing to get news yes. about New Zealand and how they've handled the pandemic. And I mean, yes. just, but it, it's, I know that there are 
I think part of the issue is that yeah. for a lot of women, they're going, I don't, there's no way I want to get involved in being in that kind of energy. Yes. And Cause it's toxic, <laughs> isn't it? Janet? It is. It's, it's toxic. Like toxic. Yeah. I was approached um, a few years ago yes. by somebody in the city here asking and said, suggesting that I run for city council. And I yeah. said, no, thank you. I yeah. said, I value my time and my life and I yes. know some city councillors and no, I don't want to get that involved no in that. Not, yeah. the, not the current, not the way it's currently done, yes. you know, but yes. someone has to step up and change it. But it's, it's interesting because we have um, our provincial uh, mi minister yeah. here, yeah. Um, representative and our federal representative are both female in our writing here. Ah. So, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and and I guess like from your perspective um that your work is in creating some of those wonderful women's uh, or women who will be leaders of the future because mm -hmm. it has to change doesn't it Janet like it just we cannot keep doing government the way that we are currently doing it because we need people to step up and I actually believe mm -hmm. that there are men in this world who can lead from that better leadership stance we're just not seeing them actively across the world at the moment yes I agree that there are uh, it's it's not gender based it's it's no. um attitude and awareness yes. based <laughs> yes. leadership I think yeah and that's what we need and we need you know all both genders working yes. together yes. to make the world a better place for sure because that's that's the best of both worlds when uh -huh. you have men and women working together who are um, empowered to elicit change we will see such a you know that's my hope for my grandson and um, Peter tells me you have quite a tribe of grandchildren <laughs> 11 of them and two oh, great that's... granddaughters <laughs> Yes. Oh. In fact, the oldest, um, the oldest is 25 and she's a, it's a she is a mechanical engineer. Oh, and, wonderful. Yeah. And uh, there's nine boys and two girls, grandchildren, <laughs> and two great granddaughters. But oh. yeah, they range in age. Well, the youngest will be 14 um, yeah. this summer. And I became a grandmother when I was 43. Yes. So I was yes. very young and I feel so blessed to have this game. Isn't it a kids. blessing to I'm the same. I had my children young. So I've got, you know, a 32 year old and a, and a four year old um, grandson. And I, I truly feel blessed because I have a particular passion for women who um, enter their 40s, 50s and 60s. I think it's a, an amazing time for women. Um, an amazing time to be very clear on what you're passionate about and that whole wisdom that comes with age is just mm -hmm. the best thing about getting older and and you would know as well Janet there's just something precious and and very wonderful about aging and wisdom and I feel I'm very grateful that I'm a young grandmother relatively young yes. to this yes this gang because I didn't know I knew only two of my grandparents but um, yes. I was we moved from England I was born in England and yeah. we moved when I was six to Canada and I didn't know I really didn't know my grandparents even yeah. when we lived in England I didn't live near them so for me this gift of having these grandchildren yes. is just amazing just amazing and and janet are so they great. all over canada or all over the world or close to you or um there's only none of them are close to well our one daughter lives in london um, okay but her two sons are about um oh 100 kilometers away so not okay. too far yeah, yeah um but our oldest son um lives in just outside of edmonton in oh, Saint yes, Albert, yes, alberta yes, yes and the yes. others um live about oh two and a half three hour drive away okay um so it, you know not next door yeah. but we get to see them once in a while <laughs> yeah. yeah i have the best memories of west edmonton mall when mm -hmm. um i took my first trip to canada my children were who eight and ten 
and the Spice Girls were performing in West Edmonton Mall. So we came from um, a small country town. So just the size of that place oh. blew us away. <laughs> but then the kids being able to see the Spice Girls in the mall, I have oh, yes. the most wonderful memories of that time in um, Edmonton. Ice skating on um, my brother's house was close to a little lake and taking them ice skating on the lake for the first time. And yeah, wonderful memories of Canada, seeing snow for the first time in Banff of all places, mm -hmm. like completely magical place oh, yes. for you know your first snow sighting. And I've been in love with snow ever since. So I'm pretty... <laughs> Um, I wish we had uh, snow where we lived now, but um, and we don't have much snow in Australia in comparison to Canada. Of mm -hmm. course, you've got just those glorious mountains and uh, and and scenery, uh, just truly beautiful place. Um, so, besides finishing the books, Janet, what else have you got planned for twenty twenty and on into twenty twenty one? Hmm. Well, let's see. It's, it's all up in the air because yes. usually um, my husband and I go to Baja, Mexico for about yes. five months in the winter. Oh, and we have wow. a trailer down there and my husband's a windsurfer and we're yes. on, on the, the Baja Peninsula, just north of Los Cabos. Yes. And um, we live in a trailer, a fifth wheel trailer on the beach. Yes. Yeah. And uh, we have family and friends down there from all across Canada and the U.S. Yeah. Uh, but who knows if we'll be able to go this year yeah uh, yes pandemic so that's all up in the air so we will see what happens yeah. <laughs> with that we may be spending the winter here in Canada um, <laughs> but other than that I'm finishing the two books is yes. kind of high on my my list yes um and our actually I'm hoping our son and his wife and their three kids from outside of Edmonton will be coming to visit us in August yeah because um, they haven't met their cousins on this side of the country yet so yeah yeah um so we're hoping that happens and just sowing a, planting a seed here when yes. our grandkids turn 10 yeah they get they got a trip with me <gasps> so we to celebrate because then they're old enough to pull their own carry on yes and yes. they're yes. pretty obnoxious and yes. they still listen and yes. um and so it's and that has been I'm all about creating memories with them oh, definitely so I'm, I'm sowing that seed for you with your grandkids because yes. um, it's it is so great to go and spend that time with them and I've done a variety of things whitewater rafting week and yeah. Disney and all kinds of stuff with them yes so, yes yeah. yes yeah, I, as you're saying that, I'm like, oh, I can't wait till Archer's 10 and maybe we could do this and this and this. Yeah. He's just so much part of our life. He lived with us as, as a little person and he visits and he, he this is like his second home. So he just mm -hmm. goes off with Poppy and they go and talk to the goats and play with the llamas and go down to the creek and climb trees and all sorts of things. So he's he's very special and it's unlikely that we'll have uh, many grand any other grandchildren for a little while yet uh, my son's actually in New Zealand and uh, working on his uh, career so it, it'll be a little while yet but yes I'm thinking ahead to when Archer is 10 that would be wonderful because I'd love to be able to take him to places like Canada that is just uh, so big and beautiful and so much to see so yes mm -hmm. let's hope that this whole virus situation uh, ends uh quite soon would be good although I think it'll probably be a few, couple of years before it's completely through its mm -hmm. cycle um how's Canada fared with the virus um we've had um over 100,000 cases and yeah. about 8,000 deaths what has been yeah. Ontario and Quebec uh, yes. which are the two largest provinces um yeah. have been hit the hardest so yeah. where we are Toronto it, biggest largest city in Canada yeah uh, it's been hit um, and yeah. Quebec has had a lot but what's really sad is in Ontario and Quebec yeah the biggest victims of this have been people who are in seniors residences and old age homes retirement homes yeah. and yeah. Um, it has just uh, a lot 
and interestingly in the privately owned ones because oh. they switch personnel around actually yeah. of the about 8,000 deaths about 5,000 have been in seniors residences in the yeah. two provinces yeah. so that has been devastating and hopefully they're going to look at this in um, how they're managing these um, yeah. because that's been the biggest victims have been seniors yes. in the homes yeah Other I than remember that, we've I... not fared too badly <laughs> yeah. but that's been devastating yeah um yeah. I remember talking to my brother and him being terribly distressed about what was happening in um aged care in mm -hmm. um, Canada during the virus and um it, it, talking about people just leaving the aged care with with no care no no personnel yeah. and people just just passing because there was no one to look after them yeah. so um is your aged care system run federally or no by provincially state? provincially uh -huh. okay um, but what they did was the um they brought the army in they brought a oh. military uh, medical personnel in to go into the homes and provide the care that they needed and oh, wow. they actually submitted a report that made that cited all of the shortcomings yes um so it, it was publicly uh there was, there was already public awareness but this yes. kind of pushed it over which was great yes. because yeah. now they're going to have to do something about it good yeah yeah, yeah. um in australia our uh, is managed federally and by the states and we actually have national quality and safety standards that govern the type of care that they give and the services they ha that they have to provide so but then again we've been very lucky in Australia we had um, border closure and um, a shutdown and um, quarantine of anyone coming in from overseas and our state borders are still not open uh, not all of them are open and there's still no international travel unless you're an Australian resident so mm -hmm. again incredibly lucky that we did those things and it's protected us thankfully from a bigger issue like what Canada UK US and other places have experienced so mm -hmm. um, I know that we when I used to work in corporate mm -hmm. health that we used to prepare for pandemic but I think that successive government has not seen the importance of preparing for pandemic so that those bodies of work and that preparedness had fallen off the radar and mm -hmm. it's come back onto their radar in a very big way because of the health and economic impacts of this pandemic so oh well, for sure yes well Janet I've just looked at the time and I'm think Peter will think that we've forgotten him <laughs> so Peter do you want to come on and have a quick chat to Janet <laughs> he might be off snoozing <laughs> <laughs> in which case you and i can continue talking for yes. the rest of the show oh, oh there me. he is <laughs> I, I won't chat but i will acknowledge you and say thank you janet it's lovely to, Hello, lovely to see your smiling face <laughs> hi how are you <laughs> good i'd normally be in canada this time of the year i know it's it's but, lovely here the weather but not any <laughs> you'd have to go anywhere yeah so we're just preparing for canada day Yes. <laughs> we, we run Canada Day when we're here. Oh, my okay. Partner, That's good. My partner Mia is Canadian, of course. Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. So lovely to see you. Thanks for nice to see you. giving us some time to hear your wisdom. Oh, my pleasure. I and hope to really be over enjoyed there it. Next, hope to be there at least next year. Yes. Well, we're fingers crossed. <laughs> yes. And thank you for this opportunity to share. Oh. It's and been an absolute you. pleasure having you on the show, Janet, and I look yeah. forward to seeing those books. Make sure you let me know when they're ready. Um, and um, and it will be, yeah, I'm looking forward to doing some more research around the, your other books because I'm sure they're fantastic. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks have, for the opportunity. Have a wonderful evening and thank you for staying up late with us and being on Radio Tony and the Passion Project. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Lucky Thanks, last, Janet. Janet. Lucky last. <laughs> yep. Take care. Yes. Bye, Bye, Janet. Bye. Hey, Peter. Hi. It's almost sad. This is the last. Um, I know. It's almost sad. Last I'll just interview. 
I know. Our last Passion Maps interview, not the last for Radio Tony. Radio Tony will still be on next week, um, but I think Radio Tony will uh, convert to talking um, business and business strategy, but we'll, I'll keep you posted on that. But this is our last uh, conversation with Peter and um, the Passion Project, and it was wonderful to finish with uh, Janet and her enormous expertise around coaching and leadership and what a wonderful conversation that was yeah she's really a beautiful woman and uh yeah yeah i mean she was the one that started our work in north america you know by insisting that we run a program here and um yeah so that was it was lovely to see her and um yeah i mean i feel really proud that people like this are yeah are in the network there's something about this work that that yes. um, attracts amazing people like i don't know what it is but yeah it, it just does. is so when and i think back through the different people who you've interviewed i mean they've all been amazing in their own right they have they have and and they're all amazing <clears throat> but they're all uniquely amazing with their different um and uh wonderful uh, ways in which they work and how they work with with people but the one thing that it has been through all of the coaches has been that um, agreement that by helping people find their passion and aligning themselves with their passion it helps in so many ways in life and work and business and and again growing that body of people that are living passionately and not just uh, doing the daily grind or going to work because that's what they've always done or that's what they have to do but finding what they're passionate about and doing that has brought so much change and that's verified by each one of the coaches that we've talked to and um, it, it's a lovely thing to share with the world how finding your passion can drive your life forward and help you achieve, achieve all the things that you want to achieve and also the diversity of people that it helps from just you know wonderful everyday people going about their job to higher level leaders and and um people from across the world so it's a wonderful program peter and um i've been really felt quite um uh it's been a wonderful thing to be involved in and I feel privileged that you allowed me to go on that journey with you in front of the audience of, of people and to spread the news of what passion mapping can mean in your life. Well, it's a, it's an honour for me too, Tony. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> you're a pretty passionate person anyway. <laughs> but, you know, but I'm on a mission with this. You know, I just yes. think that, yes. that, that this issue of, kids or you can walk now or you can you know you can stand up you can walk you can you know you can read you can get your 10 you know you can start to read words you can start to do this and this and this and never people saying well who do you want to be yeah or or being congratulated on demonstrating compassion or love or you know it's all about what you've done yeah and of course when you when you in the passion space, it's all about who you are and and how yeah. you express that in the world. Yeah. And and I think um, the world would be very different, you know. Yes, so I'm on a bit of a mission, you know, with yes. with this work because it's a great equaliser too. Because we're all Definitely. we all have our own unique passions. Yeah. And 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 as you know, sometimes we think of people in high places in companies. Yeah. But in fact, often they're right out of touch with who they are. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. The conversation with Janet about world leadership, some of those guys are definitely not living their passion, are they? No, well, it's, they're certainly not. I mean, they're living from their heads. Yeah. If you're living your passion, you're living from your heart and soul, you know. And if you're living from I your head... Sorry, Peter, I just had the funniest thought of um, getting Donald Trump to do his passion map. Wouldn't that be a hoot? <laughs> well, I'd do it. You get me into the White House, Tony, <laughs> and I'd be happy to do it. I don't think he would even entertain it. But, like, 
could you imagine that the the change that it would bring about for him? Yeah, well, I more mean, importantly for Malena. But it was extraordinary. Yeah. 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 But I had a situation here where, yes. where one of the senior women in cabinet wanted to, or not in cabinet, in in uh, um, basically opposition. Yes. But, um, yes. Wanted to do it, and then they went. She went and talked to the leader. Yeah. And he just gave it a blanket no, no question, yeah. no nothing. And that oh, was after we'd done. That's after we did. A, we'd done a program for. 20 of the most leading women in the world with extraordinary wow. results. Wow. So, you know, it's interesting how, you know, how that, and I, I too, this white male dominance, and, yeah. you know, it, it's not about leadership, it's about dominance. How can I dominate? Yeah. How can I, how can I get my way, you know? Yes. And that's what I think as a leader, but it's not, yeah. we know it's not, but they don't. Yeah. And that's right, Peter. We need um, more men and women, but we need men to be understanding these concepts and understanding that it's, it's it shouldn't ever be ego driven, and it should never be uh, world dominance. That quiet, powerful empowerment of others to live their best lives that will win any time, and it it definitely has the power to change the world that we live in. Yeah, it's sort of power within rather than power over. Yes, yes, yes. In fact, I once, I once did, a, did a, um, a, a project for about 30 CEOs. This is not yeah. before, just before the turn of the century yeah. to talk about key issues. And it was really interesting how it broke into two groups. The yeah. first group were all about you know, how do we change our external circumstances? How do we lobby the government for this, yeah. lobby the government for that, you know? And the other group was all about leadership and values. Yes. So even then, like 20 years ago, there was this real, there were people who were coming from a leadership place. Yeah. They were from a, you know, an ethical leadership place. Yeah. But also there's something about the way our organisations are, you know, are designed and, it works against it, which is something that I'm also passionate about, looking at yeah. new ways of organisation. That we're, we're actually, the, the, one of the guiding principles is what people are passionate about. Yeah. Because when if the gardening principle is what they're passionate about, it's coming from their humanity. So they're bringing yes. humanity into what they do in the organisation. Yeah. And, of course, there's a lot of organisations out there that don't feel too human to me. Well, so. if you just... If you thought about government and each of the different mem uh, ministers who have a specific portfolio, imagine if you had a minister who in charge of finance who was actually really passionate about finance or a minister of the environment who was really, who their guiding passion was about the environment. Imagine what that would do for government here yeah. in Australia. That's if they could get past the overriding yes. structure. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and I hope yeah. that those things are changing, probably slower than I would like to see them change. But uh, I, it, there does definitely feel like a groundswell of knowledge and acceptance that the humanity of um we need to be embracing our humanity on all levels of um, government and uh, organisations and corporate um, structures. Uh, and some of that's happening, but for others, it's right, not even on their agenda, which is a shame, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it is. And I love to see the way you bring it out into the world. You know, you're bringing these issues to your audience, You're, and even yeah. if people are only sort of thinking about them now, they may go away and think about yes. them some more or something else triggers yeah. a way that they can it's come from their truth more often. Yeah. It's definitely about planting the seed that might inspire someone someday. 
um, and it's um, uh, awesome that we can start to have these conversations freely um, with using the power of the internet and in particular um, online radio because it gives people the power to listen to what they want to listen to without ad advertisements and, and we can talk freely and openly about some of the wonderful things that are available to people to help them live their best lives. And at the Absolutely. end of the day, if you're following your passions, you're living your best life, aren't you? Absolutely, yeah. I noticed someone put in the, in the chat an idea about a global environmental government. Yes, yes. Wouldn't that be amazing? A central that be body. Amazing? Yeah, a central body that has uh, control over the environments of the world so that all of them get protected. You know, the Amazon, the Great Barrier Reef and um, the beautiful big parks in the US, uh, the Rockies. See, I can get excited about there's, that. There's of plenty stuff. of work for you to do, right, <laughs> on Radio Tony, that's I for know. sure. I <laughs> know, I know. Every week I think of another Radio Tony show that I could do. So I'll just have to keep growing and um, <laughs> getting there. <laughs> I've had one of those wonderful weeks where I've been approached by a number of really wonderful and amazing and unique uh, people saying, could we do this? And I'm like, hmm, yeah, we probably could. We could probably do that. Let's let's look at what that might look like. So I'm having, yeah, one of those great weeks. And then to follow up to start next week, you and I are going to meet and see how we can drive the passion um, mapping work forward. And so, yeah, life's pretty exciting. And again, it's because I put that Radio Tony, uh, truth and justice, moments of joy and graciousness and the set, gratitude in the centre of my uh, passion map and, and off it goes. It's amazing. As I said to Janet, it just, you seem to just change your energy, change the energy that you're putting out into the world and it starts to come back in a way that you never know how it's going to come back. But gosh, it's fun. It is fun. Yeah. And the weird thing for me is you change your map, you change yourself. Yes. You change yourself, you change the map. It's, yes. like, a, it's like an energetic sense of who we are, almost a spiritual sense of who we are Yeah. at our deepest level. Yeah. So I can, right. get pretty, I can get pretty carried away talking about this. And it has <laughs> been a fabulous time. I know, but it's been so much fun to do it live on radio. Um, and like we never would have we never would have done it if we hadn't been presented with the unique set of circumstances around a pandemic and your desire to try and get more of your stuff online and see how that works online because you know the passion mapping process, you need to actually feel into your body um some of those elements of what what drive you what drives you and it, i just feel like it's been such a success um and and such a wonderful experience to do to go from with you to go from that face-to-face -face mode of delivery to the online delivery and just see how wonderful that has been and with the hope that we you'll be able to reach so many more people using some of these new technology and formats. Absolutely. So this has been a fantastic catalyst, Tony. Um, Good. The, you know, not only we've done our first sort of online visible program, yes. we've also run in parallel our yes. first online coach training program. Yeah. And it's also been a catalyst for a whole group of people within our community to reinvent, right. reinvent us. Yes in a totally different way where the guiding principle is going to be the passions of the people, yeah. passions yeah. and humanity of the people involved. Yeah. And that, you know, one of the things that it won't be is hierarchical. Yes. So, yeah. And then also it's, it's been a catalyst for what I'm hoping will be a global passion Conversation. summit. Or a summit where we get speakers. Yeah. Yeah. And also following that, a global bombora. Yes. Oh, and I've yes, talked about definitely. Bombora before, which is you get enough energy behind in the sea and you get massive waves. You yes. get enough energy 
of passion behind a particular topic yes. and great ways of action happening. So yeah. that I think is now possible online, all thanks to you. And thanks, Aww. all thanks, a lot of the thanks to you. Aww. But it has it's opened up, it's opened up new ways of working, new ways of organizing, yeah. new ways of being. And of course, energy, there's a lot more energy than there is matter. Yes. You know, E equals MC squared, as they say. Yeah. yeah. C squared is one humongously big number. So yeah. a tiny bit of matter is a huge amount of energy, which is the atomic yeah. bomb, of course. Yeah. So yeah. why don't we manage it instead of managing our thoughts and managing, you know, so that's my, that's something that's exciting. And it's exciting to see it you is. express Aww. yourself through, through that means, you know. I think I think we're going to change the world in many ways, Tony. With these sorts oh god, of I hope so. I really do. These sorts of interviews, these sort of initiatives, yes, you know, and, and these random events that happen. Yes. If you if you're in tune with who you are and what's important yes. to you, you'll grab. They're not them actually and random. They're, they're, they're the universe giving you messages. Yeah. Oh, Peter, look, I've just looked at the time and thought, oh, my God, Don's going to be booting us off the live stream any minute now. Um, so listeners and watchers today, this is Radio Tony and the Passion Project, our last show. Radio Tony will continue. Um, so stay tuned to see what we've got lined up for next week. Peter, thank you so much for the opportunity to do this work with you to have the passion project live on radio tony to do my passion mapping and i can't wait to see what unfolds in the future um collaboratively collaboratively with us and i look forward to that journey why don't we book a time for a year hence where we can talk yes. about what happened in the in the in that in the past 12 months let's do that on monday it'll be amazing yeah 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 let's do that on monday all right people thank you so much for listening we are completely out of time um i'm going to hand over to the wonderful don who is our engineer and i'll say goodbye for now and see you all next week bye bye thank you for joining us on radio tony this week Tune in next week for the next episode of Radio Tony and The Fashion Project. Live streaming each week, part of the journey. Discover your passion, learn about your purpose, and connect with Tony and Peter. This show is proudly brought to you by Passion Maps. HTTPS www.passionmaps.com That's www.passionmaps.com Live passionately every day use the code tony to register for your own online deep dive program with passion maps see you all next week bye for now